Hello, algebra students. Today we are talking about absolute value inequalities. But before we begin this, I have to make sure you know what absolute value is. And I want you to write this definition down in your notes. Make sure you have your notebooks hanging. The definition of absolute value is a distance from zero on a number line. Repeat that, the distance from zero on a number line. It's a very, very important definition. All right. So, if we have some problems that look like these. Oh, whoa, what is going on with my smart board? Oh, no. All right, there they are. Problem A, the absolute value of 3. What is it? Well, I need a number line. I could use a number line in my mind, but you guys can't see that. So, 3. I ask myself, how far is 3 from 0 on the number line? Well, the simple answer is it's fun two, three spaces. So therefore, the absolute value of three is three. See how simple that is? All right, now, let's try another one. Let's try the absolute value of negative five. Well, I put the bouncing ball on negative five, and then I count the spaces, and I say it's one, two, three, four, five. And it is five spaces, so the absolute value of negative five is 5. Now, I'm afraid some of you just made an assumption in your mind, which is totally wrong, but some of you just said, oh, absolute value just makes it positive. No. Absolute value is the distance from 0 on a number line. If you use the just makes it positive argument, you will not be able to do problems like C or E. All right. So we're going to try those in a second here. But let's remember that the All right, so remember the, sorry if there's no continuity here, I had to take a break for a second, but remember the definition of absolute value is the distance from zero on a number line. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at problem C. I wanna know what number or numbers are four spaces from zero on a number line. Well, the obvious answer is four, right? Four is definitely four spaces from, a num from zero on a number line, but there's another number that makes that true. Yeah, there's a number on this side of zero that's four spaces. So the absolute value of x equals four means that x could equal four or negative four. You see how there's two answers? Um, because the definition of absolute value is the distance from zero on a number line. And this one is one, two, three, four spaces. And this one is then t three and four more spaces. So we have two answers for problem C. Now problem D is probably pretty simple for you. Just want to know what number or numbers are zero spaces from zero. Well, there would only be one answer there, right? Zero. Okay, now letter E says what number or numbers are negative one spaces from zero. I challenge you to find me any space on this number line that is negative one spaces from zero. I don't think you can do it, right? So this one would have no solution. You see, in math, distances are positive. The only time we ever have a negative number on a distance is to indicate direction. But the actual distance you travel is positive. I mean, think about it this way. What if you go for a jog? And this is your home right here, okay? And you jog, oh, I don't know, three miles. One, two, three miles. Now you're three miles from your home, right? And you're gonna turn around and go back by the same path. Well, when you're all done jogging, how far have you gone? Well, you went six miles, right? You went three miles in the positive direction, and then you went three miles, oh, I'm sorry, you went three miles in the negative direction. But you don't say, well, I went negative three miles because you still jog three miles each way. So it's a total of six miles. Okay, C, D, and E are very important along with the definition of absolute value, the distance from zero on a number line. Without those, you can't do problems like these two down here. And I'll call this one F, and then this one, G. 
All right. Now, there's one other little trick I want to show you. And I want you to intentionally misread these symbols. I know you know that that's a great, greater than problem. But I'm going to ask you to misread it. I'm going to ask you to call this a great or. All right. And this one over here is going to be a less than. And I'll show you why in a second. Hopefully you're remembering the previous lesson where we did ors and ands. This problem F is an or problem in disguise. Problem G is an and problem in disguise. And I'll show you how to deal with these right now. Okay, first thing I do, I can't just start subtracting off. Mitch, did you hear that? We can't just start subtracting off. We have to rewrite this absolute value as an or problem because it has two possible answers, just like problem C had two possible answers. So we need to write it. And what we're going to do is we're going to do 2x plus 1 is greater than 4. Or 2x plus 1. And then we flip our inequality and change the sign of the number off to the side here. Oh, I think I missed my 1. Sorry about that. So I go ahead and solve both parts. I subtract 1 from each side. And I get 2x is greater than 3. And then I divide by 2 on each side. And I get x is greater than 1 and a half, Or 3 halves. We'll use 1 and a half, and you'll see why. OK, now I have to come over and solve this other part here. And so I'm going to subtract 1 from each side, just like I did on the other part of the OR statement. And I'm going to have 2x is less than negative 5. And then I'm going to divide by 2. And then I'm going to get x is less than negative 2 and a half. And I need my OR to come on down here. So I have these two possible answers. And if I get on a number line, my solution will look like this. All right, first of all, I need x is greater than 1 and a half. So I'm going to show 1 and a half on my number line. And then I'm going to need an open point there, right? And then I'm going to shade where the numbers are greater than 1 and a half. Well, that would be numbers to the right of 1 and a half. And there we go. That's half of my solution. Now I have to graph the other part. X is less than negative 2 and a half. Well, here's negative 2 and a half. There's going to be an open point there because it's not equal. And then I need to shade where numbers are less than negative 2 and a half. That would be to the left. And there you go. Okay. What that means is where the shaded arrows are, any one of those numbers makes the original inequality a true statement. I can prove it to you. Let's take a number like, say, 1,000. If I put 2 times 1,000, I get 2,000. 2,000 plus 1. I need the absolute value of 2,001. Well, how far from 0 is 2,001 on a number line? Well, it would be 2,001 spaces, right? And that is greater than 4. So it checks. All right, let's pick a, num a number in the negatives, you know, less than negative 2.5. Let's take negative 100. OK, well, I would get negative 200 right here. Plus 1 would be negative 199. I need the absolute value of negative 199. How far is negative 199 from 0? Well, it's 199 spaces. And that, in fact, is greater than 4. And that checks as well. Sorry, I lost my great door there. OK, now if you picked a number in between, say like 0, watch what will happen, the unshaded part. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. Is 1 greater than 4? <coughs> no, it is not. So you see, the shaded area gives me all possible solutions, OK, to the original inequality. 
All right, the letter G is done a little bit differently, but not too differently. And I'm actually going to show you two ways. So I'm going to get a blank page here. 3x minus 4 is less than 8. Okay, so remember, this one we're going to read as a less than. And so I'm going to do it the long way, very similar to R. Some of you will like this better. I'm going to go 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 8. And at the same time, 3x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to negative 8. Okay, that's one good way to do it. Another good way to do it, which I like much better because I'm lazy, is I'm going to do this. I'm going to read 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 8. But then instead of rewriting in an and, I'm going to go like this. And if you think about it, I just flipped my inequality and made the number negative. Look. The inequality right here, 8 is bigger than my variable expression, isn't it? But when I look at this part right here, negative 8 is less than my variable expression. Look at the blue part over here. Is negative 8 less than the variable expression? Sure it is. Okay, so you can do it either way. Oops, I didn't mean for that to happen. Uh, I'm going to do it the right-hand way, but if you prefer, you can solve the uh, blue one. Okay, I'm going to solve the red one. Okay, so now I'm going to add 4 in all three places. By the way, this only works on ands. You cannot write an or this way. Okay, and I'm going to end up with this. We have negative 4 is less than or equal to 3x, which is less than or equal to 12. And then I'm going to divide by 3 in all three places. And I don't know what that is there. It's supposed to be a three. So I'm going to get negative one and one third, which is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to four. Now, check this out on a number line. Okay. I'm going to need a closed point at four, right? And I'm going to need a closed point at negative 1 and 1 third. Well, I definitely want to show that on my number line. Okay. Now, where are the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 1 and 1 third, but also less than or equal to 4 at the same time? Well, aren't they in between here? Okay. There you go. And it is usually the case that ands, ands will look like this. Ands will look like this. And of course, those points could be filled. But ors can look like, will look like this most of the time. And every now and then there's a strange situation where there's like no solution or all real numbers is the answer. And that will mean they won't, the graphs won't look like these. But as a general rule, ors look like that, ands look like that. Okay, now, again, if you want to test it and see if it makes sense, I'm suggesting that all the solutions to this original inequality, three, the absolute value of 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 8, lie in the shaded region here. Let's pick a number in there. Let's pick 1, because one's easy to work with. I've got 3 times 1 is 3, minus 4 is negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1, is definitely 1, which is less than or equal to 8. So it checks. Now pick a number outside here, say like 5. All right. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 minus 4 is 11. The absolute value of 11 is 11. Is 11 less than or equal to 8? No, it is not. So you see the non-shaded areas do not give true statements. If I put, say, negative 10 in, well, 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. Negative 30 minus 4 is negative 34. The absolute value of negative 34 is 34. And 34 is not less than or equal to 8. So there it is again. Okay. I think this lesson's gone on long enough. We're going to get some practice with this in school. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Good night, everybody.